Hey friends, today I'm going to be sharing with you my top 7 favorite books that I read in 2021 in different languages. This year I read 49 books in total. 19 of them were in English, 14 in Russian, also 8 in Polish, uh, 7 in Spanish, and 1 uh, was in Ukrainian. And among them I found so many wonderful books that it was uh, really hard for me to choose um, only a few of the best and not talk about many others. So I'll put a list of all 49 books I read this year in the description box down below. And in this video I'm going to be talking about only my favorite ones, the best seven books that I read in 2021 in English, Spanish, Polish, Russian and Ukrainian. And I'd like to start with the English books. This year my absolute favorites were two great non-fiction works. The first book is Future Minds, how the digital age is changing our minds, why this matters and what we can do about it, written by Richard Watson. This was by far one of the best books I read this year. It was published back in 2010, but it's worth reading even today, because the author was talking about the problems we are facing right now, how this new digital age is changing uh, the way we think, our ability to focus, to compose new ideas, um, and much more. And I was um, really um, su uh, surprised how interesting uh, and uh, thought-provoking uh, this book was. Uh, I read it uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, but I still remember some of the quotes and advice from the book. And I would definitely recommend it to anyone who is interested in and who has concerns about our rapidly changing world in the digital era. The next English book I want to mention is The Horse, the Wheel and Language, how Bronze Age riders from Eurasian steppes shaped the modern world. This book was written by David W. Anthony, and I thoroughly enjoyed this work. Not just because these subjects, prehistory horses and languages, are my three favorites, the author did a um, really fantastic job and described his very interesting investigation into the origins of uh, uh, Indo-European languages, uh, the location of Proto-Indo-European homeland, and so much more. This book was um, also very well written and well illustrated. It has... Um, a lot of um, interesting drawings, diagrams, tables, and yeah, I would highly recommend it to anyone who is interested in knowing more about the Indo-European language family, the domestication of horses, the invention and use of wheeled vehicles, uh, and also about Russian and Ukrainian archaeological studies. Uh, the next book uh, that I want to talk about was written in Spanish. It's called Cuentos Juveniles del Mundo by Viktor Vazhdaev. It's a beautiful collection of fairy tales from around the world that was published in Cuba nearly 50 years ago. In 1975, if I remember right, I read this um, children's um, juvenile book um, aloud to practice my Spanish pronunciation. And, you know, I was really surprised um, how beautifully written it was and also how it was um, interesting uh, for me to read, even in my 40s. 
And I believe um, these stories uh, with um, wise words and morality could teach us um, valuable lessons about life sometimes. And no matter what age we are. Uh, the next best book was uh, written in Polish, and actually uh, this book consists of uh, two volumes, Znachor and Professor Wilczor, that were written by the great Polish author Tadeusz Dawenga Mostowicz, and written more than 80 years ago. This was um, a beautiful story of a brilliant surgeon who lost his memory and completely forgot about who he was and where he lived. After many years of vagrancy, he gets to a small village where he gradually becomes a famous healer, or Znachor in Polish, uh, but he still doesn't remember who he is. And I really enjoyed this book, especially the first part, the first volume, Znachor. Actually, it was um, one of the best books I've ever read in my life. Uh, the story was so deep and emotional that it literally gripped me from the very beginning and didn't let go until the very end. And I believe uh, that these are the kinds of books that uh, everyone should read. So, I highly recommend it. The next um, best book was written in Ukrainian. It's called Tini um, Zabutych Predkiv, which means uh, Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors by Mikhailo Kotubinsky. And, you know, I've read only one book in Ukrainian this year, and I instantly fell in love with it. It was such a brilliant story about uh, Hatzels, a unique ethnic group of people who live in the Carpathian Mountains of Ukraine. Uh, the story begins um, a bit like the story of Romeo and Juliet, but um, then, rather quickly, everything changed, and we realize that there is much more to it. And I really enjoyed this story. And the author's poetic descriptions about the hustle's life, uh, the beauty and dangers of nature around them, also the mythology, customs, traditions, it was really amazing how accurately and beautifully the writer used the words to describe all of that. So it's, it's a true masterpiece of Ukrainian literature. Uh, also, this year I've read some great books in Russian. And I think the best of the best for me was Poyedinok by Alexander Kuprin. In English, it's called The Duel. It's a story about a young Russian officer whose name was Ramashov and who was stationed at a typical dull provincial Harrison of the Tsarist Russia. And, you know, I don't even know how to describe this book so as not to spoil anything. And if you love Russian literature and if you want to get a feel and better understanding why so many people supported the Russian Revolution of 1917, just read this book. It's, it's just brilliant. Also, in Russian, I've read Stalin, Жизнь и смерть by Edward Radzinsky. It's a book about the life and death of Joseph Stalin, a Soviet political leader and one of the most controversial figure in the history. Uh, and this book really opened my eyes to much more I had known, not only about Stalin, but also about the history of Russia in the first half of the 20th century. I read it 
very slowly. And I often paused to reflect on what I was reading, because it's, um, it's definitely not such an easy book that can be read in just one day and completely forgotten tomorrow. So it was um, a long and tough read, and this book left um, a deep mark on me. I finished reading it um, at the end of October, but um, I'm still thinking about it. And um, I believe we should read such books from time to time and try to learn our history as much as possible and from various sources so as not to repeat some terrible mistakes from the past. So those are my top seven favorite books that I read in 2021 in different languages. Please let me know in the comments down below what were your favorite books of the year. I would really love to know them and I would love to hear all your thoughts and book recommendations. I'm always looking for an interesting book to read, especially in English, Spanish, Polish, also Ukrainian, Belarusian. Thank you so much for watching and happy reading! Bye! <laughs>